on a hill near a wood where nobody goes up a track through a gate the food forest grows with secrets and treasures for everyone's pleasure and rob's discover rob's discovery Hello, it's another update video. Very similar to the one in February where I complained about all the jobs I hadn't finished. It's, it's much still that way actually, only, only a bit worse. And very similar to the one I made in March where everything was shooting up, except not so much is shooting up now because the geese have been running rampant. I'm always complaining about the geese. Anyway, nice to see you again. It's now the first week in May and I'm not wearing my coat for once. First time in about three years it seems like. Where am I now? I'm in a horse box, but not just any horse box. This is my tiny house project. There's a bed that pulls out, a nice little makeshift kitchen area, and a wood-burning stove. It even has proper mains type electric from some solar panels on the roof. But they're not charging particularly well at the moment because they're on top there, and it's under cover. But there it is. I'm quite proud of it. And I actually managed to go away in it for a couple of nights last week. But there'll be another video about that before too long. A feature length botanical adventure. There'll also be another video coming up about my geodesic dome greenhouse project that is not yet complete. Also it's a good time to plug my free forest garden newsletter. Every month I send out a newsletter to tell you all in detail what's going on in the forest garden and there's a lot more going on than is just in the films which I'm not making nearly as many of as I'd like and to subscribe to it for free you can go to my website which is robsfoodforest.site Anyway, on with the mini May tour. I'm having a hard chime, a chime, a hard chime getting wood chip at the moment. So I'm using some rotten hay instead for mulching. There are lots of permaculture forums and videos on the internet with the pros and cons of using hay as a mulch but I'm going to use it this year instead of wood chips, or as well as, and see how I get on. It's good organic stuff. It's got lots of seeds in it, but lots of wildflower seeds. So I may find patches of wildflowers coming up where I didn't expect, but that's fine. So lots of mulching to do around any new plants that I introduce, of which there were going to be many, but I haven't planted any seeds this year because there just hasn't been time. Although, because I've bought some good quality seeds, they'll last a good few years yet, and certainly till next year, when I hope to have finished my greenhouse in which to plant them. But I do have a few plants that I bought last year that have overwintered quite well in my miniature greenhouse behind the yurt. Look how things have lushed up since the last video in March. It's the epitome of lushness here. And these bees are the epitome of busyness. This is the one colony that survived the winter. I had four colonies of honeybees in the autumn time, including one in this warry hive. And isn't it ironic, don't you think, that the bees, the three colonies of bees in what I thought were the optimum hives with insulation on top and shelter over the top like this, 
lots of food, lots of supplies, nice new cedar wood. They've completely failed or died or abandoned the hives. Whereas the honeybees here that moved into a pile of 30 year old dilapidated rotten boxes without any cover or insulation are thriving. So um, yeah, what do we know? We just provide the habitat and they're doing quite well. The ducks are doing very, very well. They're still finding slugs despite the dryness and they are laying seven eggs a day. There are seven females and three drakes and they are very happy. The pond's still holding water well because of its clay lining. That's my shower runoff water. There are two kind of broody geese. I'm not sure I want any more geese, but I thought it'd be fun to let them sit on the eggs. But there are two female geese competing for the same clutch of nine eggs. Oh, just you honkers. All right, I'm not going to touch your eggs. I'm just showing everyone you. Say hello. Is that how we say hello? Go on, say hello nicely. All right, all right. Cozy in there, isn't it? How are those eggs doing? All right, I'll check on you later. Squelchy squelch. I should have worn boots. Ugh. All right, all right, I'm not touching your eggs. That's Beulah, Beulah the gander. And speaking of broodiness, oh, <laughs> caught myself on the gate. There is one broody bantam. Oh, there, that's um, Hugh the cockerel and the other little female bantam. And this little bantam has gone very broody. Hello, hello. She's the size of a dinner plate now. Hello. She's quite tame. Well, I won't lift her up, but she is sitting on six duck eggs. Ducks seem to make terrible mothers and chickens far better ones. I let her sit on a couple of her own eggs to begin with and I put six duck eggs next to her and she threw out her own eggs in favour of these beautiful big duck eggs that she she far favoured. I hope she'll be a good mother, although she'll have quite a shock when the little ducklings go onto the water and she can't follow them. That's probably when she'll give up. Yes, girls, I've put that glass dome over my American allspice on purpose so you can't destroy it again like you've destroyed everything else here. Ooh. It's getting a bit hot in there. But if I lift it up, they'll eat it. Conundrum. I can't sell my duck eggs quickly enough or eat them quickly enough. So I'm boiling up 30 more here to pickle them. Pickling eggs is a lot more simple than I realised. You boil them, take the shells off, and then put them in a jar and top them up with malt vinegar. And that's that. There are some things the geese don't like, fortunately, like these um, Allium fistulosa here, these Welsh onions. They're doing well. cut the grass for the first time last week so all these beautiful snaking paths make all the wildness and everything else look intentional. It's like framing a picture. As soon as you put a frame around it, the mess in the middle looks like it's supposed to be there. I'm very happy to have a few wild areas but these are all supposed to be vegetable beds 
and then our grass beds. Well, this one's not a good example. This is supposed to be as it is. There are logan berries creeping through the grass here. There's a loquat Japanese plum growing up, growing up in the middle. There's some flowering quinces here. A few other wild flowers that will come through. Some wild honeysuckle. And feeding it all with nitrogen is this Italian alder. So that patch is effectively finished and can be let to go wild now. It's working very well. I had to section off one of the many ponds because, well again, ducks and geese just obliterated my watercress and Chinese water chestnuts. I didn't really have a plan what to show you this film, I just thought I'd show you around to see what's going on. Look at that apple blossom. Smell that apple blossom. Oh yeah. Hello duckies. I finally managed to prune the fruit trees, so they'll grow with a nice shape now. So these are, this is the apple section, the orchardy type section. Apples, pears, plums, cherries, and so forth. Sorry for making you dizzy with this spinning telephone. This is where I have not finished the wattle fence yet. I made a video in November called um, Wattle Update or something like that. I did that one section for the video but really need to do it all the way down here. And I'm coppicing the willows that are growing in the wetland down at the bottom there. You can see them forming part of the hedge. They're wonderfully tall. They are eight years old now and it's taken about eight years to become self-sufficient in sustainable firewood. So I'm, again, slowly cutting them down, even though it's a bit late in the year, using the trunks for firewood and using all the brashy bits for making willow wattle. I want to leave it till next winter time, really, but I must section off this salady south end of the garden from the geese because they're destroying it. Speaking of destroying things, this is my geodesic dome that you'll see more about in a video very soon or read about in April's newsletter that's coming out, hopefully this week. I really ought to have waited for help because I shifted it from where it was assembled where I had help and the whole thing collapsed. Hopefully it's not broken. It's going to take quite a while to put it up again. What's going on here? I introduced some new wine cat mushroom spawn because I destroyed the other stuff by ripping up the mushrooms, not leaving the mycelium there. If I stop talking for a minute, you can just hear this Eliagnus humming with insect life. And it smells so sweet. So very sweet. <laughs> I'm having to take ever more extreme measures to stop the ducks going in and disturbing all the aquatic vegetables. Although they've pretty much destroyed these bathtubs. The rhubarb, a huge success. I'm giving away and eating rhubarb every day at the moment. Although now that the day's warming up slightly, its growth is going to stop. My tuna sinensis, the veggie stock cube tree. Asparagus and dandelions. I wouldn't say they're companions, but they're quite happily coexisting. And because the geese love to bite off the asparagus tops, as I do, I've sectioned it off here with wire. Unfortunately, that means I've got dandelions as well, because all the other dandelions in the garden, the geese have also eaten. But I quite like dandelions too, so I'm really pleased that they're here. This Siberian pea shrub's looking rather handsome. Ah, and these quamash are making a comeback. Quamash. There'll be beautiful blue swaying cornflower type flowers there soon. And this tripwire is working very well against unwanted gobbly hissers. 
And these wild gooseberry bushes are doing remarkably well this year. And the marjoram ground cover is slowly spreading. And soon I shall plant some tomatoes to run through their protective prickly branches. Well, there's lots, lots more to see, but um, I need to make more specific videos about individual things that are going on. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that little May update. There are two more videos on the way soon. The um, horse box adventure, where I do a bit of foraging, and one about the greenhouse construction. And also, I've got so many planned for this year, there's just so much to show you and to talk about. But I will leave it there. I do hope you're all well, and thank you for watching, and see you soon. Bye! Oh, I need to leave the gate open actually. Oh, I forgot I put that log there. <laughs> I've got a couple of friends arriving in a minute. We're coming to, um, oh, they're coming to, to do a read through of a script that they've written. They're coming next weekend to make a short film. Nothing to do with the forest garden, just set in the forest garden. So, if it comes out well and it's, and it's a success, I might, um, I might show it to you. <laughs> Can't stop talking, can I? Oh, a butterfly. Oh, what's that one? Oh, it's an orange tip one. Oh, that's a first this year. Oh, clouds. What's that one going right through the sky there? Hmm. Suspicious. Bye. I've got company. Better go and hide. Run! People! People are coming! Ah. Oh! <laughs> Forgot about the eggs. Better put the kettle on.